Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner. And with me uh, tonight is Anthony. And dang, you didn't jump the gun on this one. You didn't want, I was going to let you go. Well, I was going to say, I, that's why I pointed at Anthony so you wouldn't talk. You just had to say something first, though, right? Okay. You couldn't just say my name. You had to. Well, what do you want to be called, dude? Bubblish Fish Eye? You want to be called Tony? You want to be called Mushu? Moochie? The Mochi? one and only Mushu. Is, Mushu. It's just what people okay. know me as, the one and only. Well, I've heard you call yourself other things, too. But, I mean, that's I don't know. That's just side gigs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we should call him, uh, what's the name of that guy from Adventureland with the little noodle arms? Oh, yeah. That, Finn. Yeah, or, Finn. Is whatever. it Finn or is Finn the dog? Yeah, no, no, it's, no, it's Jake's, Jake. Jake's Jake. the dog. Jake's Finn the dog. Jake. Yeah, Finn's the human. Finn, Finn is, I mean, Finn is that's the, the dog. That's the name. Tony's What's his name, Finn the human. <laughs> Tony's oh, okay. looking at me like I think he knows you're going to be Finn the human now. Yeah. That's a strong little blonde boy, so I guess. Oh, yeah, sure. He's a strong little. He has noodles for arms, dude. He fights the monsters and vampires and demons. Not really. Yeah, I see him do no, it all the time. Not, no, not really. No, I just saw him do it the other day. But no, but not really, because the dog is the one that does it, because of the, he can stretch. Yeah, that's his. That's, that's who. That's who wins. That's what demons you're, are you're, afraid of stretching. <laughs> your dog, your dog's a chihuahua. He's not gonna do anything. He's gonna oh. yap. And what we're talking about tonight is he would. He'd be useless. You could throw him as a snack. Mm. That's it, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, we have Matt from last week. So Matt and us recorded last week, and so I, we started talking to me and Matt, and I thought, you know what? Why not just have him on? And he can. We can. Go, he's had a dog man encounter. Um. So we're gonna we're gonna have. You want to say hi, Matt? How you guys doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, and so and so you can sit in and and we can go over some of these cases we got. So we're doing a dog man episode here. One of the things that I wanted to tell everybody, and and I have to reiterate this because uh, I don't know if people are just not getting the memo, but if you send me, I'm Josh Turner nine forty on Instagram. Go join, join up with me on Instagram. Please let me know that you are a listener because it happened again. Um, and so I just, it's like a lot, like there's a bunch of people, it's like people approve my friend requests or follow me, whatever. And then they don't tell me that they are listeners of the show and I have to ask. Um, and then people answer or they don't answer. And then they, they go, well, I sent your friend request like two years ago. And I'm like, or, you know, a long time ago. And I'm like, I asked you if you were a listener and they're like, and you deleted it. Cause you never answered after, you know. Several cycles of the moon, I went ahead and just deleted it. I said, these people aren't going to, you know. And the reason I bring up the seven cy- the, the cycles of the moon is because that we're talking about tonight. We don't know what that is. Uh, it could be a part of that. And, but, the, you know, we're going to get into that. So, but before we do, don't forget, get your concert, uh, your concert, get your, <laughs> it's like a concert, get your conference tickets at Eventbrite. Say the name of it, Anthony. So it's listed on Eventbrite as Paranormal Roundtable's second annual Dogman Encrypted Conference. Jamboree. Mm. I'm kidding. I added that last part. I just thought it would sound good. So, no, but c- come to the conference. Uh, Matt said he's going to try and make it. I told him he could come, you know, um, and we're going to have a good time. We're going to tell some stories. We're going to have not really me so much as we're going to have all these other guests on there that are going to speak because you guys hear me speak all the time. So, that's what it's about, and we're going to have a ton of, ton of, like, speakers. I mean, amazing. Adam Davies, like, Ron Moorhead, uh, who, Ken Gerhardt, well, Ken, let's see, Lyle Blackburn, David Barton, Redley, Barton, 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 I mean, all the loved ones. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be an epic con- a conference. Um, the only person that we really is is Linda, and she's sadly passed away, but not forgotten. She definitely is not forgotten. She's one of my inspirations, and, and now writing and being close to finishing my books. Um, my first couple, um, because I started out with one and I said, you know what? I just started going into two because I have so many stories that just kind of ended up with two. And then I'm quickly going to jump on a third one. I'm not going to rest on my laurels of the success that I know I will have from the books. I'm putting out that positive energy. I know it sounds arrogant, but I'm joking. But anyway, I'm only serious. So I I, I really, I want to know what y'all's opinions are. Some of these crazy encounters, especially Matt, because Matt having had an encounter and I having had an encounter, we can compare notes. And we got into some really cool stuff toward the end of the show. Not that the whole, the whole story was just crazy. It's cool, you know, but we really started asking some questions at the end there. And so we, we ran out of time, but we're going to do it this week. So don't forget the YouTube link to this show will be put on Facebook, on our Facebook group, and you might win a prize. And every Friday, we do a live stream on YouTube that goes two, three hours. We have a guest on every week, and we tell stories. 
and we, you know, they tell their stories and their encounters and everything else. And we also just have fun. I mean, it's just, you know, more time for us to just be, I guess, relax. So we really just joke around more. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, apparently also, if I don't like the guests, I start talking about religion and I start uh, talking over them. <laughs> That is something I just enjoy doing and just being completely uh, a crude, rude. What dude. would you like us to do? Be rude to them? So no, we would just, you know. Passive aggressiveness. It, yeah. this, this is how I get rid of it. I'm like, you know what you need, lady? You need Jesus. Mm. That's what I say. Mm-hmm. I tell her, you know what? I think that dog man attacked you because it smelled the devil on you. And I could possibly help you get rid of that if you join my Patreon. And folks out there in, in speaking of the Patreon. YouTube land, speaking of Patreon, $20. Thirty dollars is a swag and a super swag, okay, respectively, twenty and thirty. Uh, if you're a ten dollar ten, you've been in for three months and you're already grandfathered in, then you can get your swag back too. But twenty dollars gets you a swag bag full of merchandise, the uh, autographed book from one of many authors, which is what you'll win if you also go leave a comment on one of the shows and you pet your pick, you win a book. But on the Patreon, you get a book. You get another book, and that's a $30 tier, and you get like a, a, a T-shirt or a hoodie, your choice, and then you get like an, whatever the gift is at the time, Tumblr, whatever it is, and then, of course, we give you stickers. We give you all kinds of stuff. We, we, we really – because I want you to go out and wear my stuff. I want you to wear our hats, our, our beanies. I want you to wear our hoodies. I want you to go out and represent – put the stickers everywhere. Put them at your local bagel shop, your bakery. Go to the – you're tired, you're poor. Oh, wait, that's a different thing. And and get, and do what you got to do, okay? Give them to everybody you can and just go say, look, go to Paranormal Roundtable. Check it out. This guy's babbles, talks about all kinds of crazy stuff. And then put the stickers on your car and drive around and just tell everybody, hey, you know. So anyway, that being said. Well, I was going to say, in case you can't find any of those uh, links that we mentioned, they're always in every YouTube uh, description. Everyone. Everyone. So just if you click on that, you'll be able to find everything you need right in there. Mm-hmm. And, and now the Patreon is patreon.com slash PRT podcast. So go there, patreon.com slash PRT podcast. And once you do the 20 or $30 tier, you don't have to wait. Just hit me up and say, hey, I, I, I put the $20, $30 tier I joined and we'll send out your stuff. But let me know on Patreon. Now, if you are if you want a friend request, Facebook, go ahead and Facebook me on Messenger. Now, you can send stories to Messenger or Instagram. People do both. Or you can send it to me at Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com, Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. And just say, hey, Wolf, that's my nickname. Uh, I got a story. And we'll we'll uh, we'll check it out. So here we are again, same time next week. And we're with our friend Matt. Now, Matt told his uh, crazy, amazing story last week. And I, I was going to do a Dog Man episode, you know, on the heels of that because I had a bunch of material and I thought it's time to to do some some dog man because that's kind of my main wheelhouse that and ghosts you know, and so I thought it's time to do one, and I wanted to have Matt on as the guest, but here we are with some other stories. Now, we le- when we last left off with you, Matt, we were talking about the the popping noises and the mist, and I wanted to touch base on the mist before we go any further because one of my stories I'm going to tell, which made me think about this. When you started talking about these things and the pause, go ahead and repeat for the audience what you were talking about when it walked. Yeah, so uh, when when I had my experience uh, and my other friends with this dog man, um, it came into a building that we were in. We had a, a fire going in the middle of the room. And one of the things that always stood out was with me is when it's front left foot slash paw, whatever you want to call it, um, it was down on all fours at this point when it hit the ground near the fire. Um, it sent up these wisps of fire that, that uh, I liken it to. If you see videos of the sun, I'll say it again. Uh, you see like the storms that are magnetically happening on the sun. You get like those cyclone kind of effects on some of the things that stick out from the sun. That's kind of what it looked like, but really small on the ground next to the fire. And it's it's leg for maybe a couple seconds seemed to me either to have the reflection from its fur. Um, somehow it happened. It looked to me like it for a second, it, it kind of cloaked. 
and and its leg was transparent because when it hit the ground and those wisps of fire came up, you could see the fire on the leg. It looked like the leg itself wasn't there. You saw fire. You could see through it. Uh, it, like it was transparent and it only happened for like a second and a half to two seconds and then it was back to normal but it happened long enough that I remember noticing that and it stuck out to my my attention so you know I had said that I, I believe that they have a supernatural uh, quality about them that they they ride the veil and what I mean by that is that they kind of are able to come in and out of their dimension but into ours and become physical or as little physical as they need to be i think they're capable of doing a lot of supernatural things and you know that's disturbing in the essence of itself too that you know it could turn itself in the mist or or have that predator effect on, you know, as a whole on the whole thing so i don't know but that that stood out to me and i i believe that it it does take supernatural forms and uh there's a lot more to it, to it than just the, the, the werewolf. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and so that, that brings me to the first story I was going to tell. And this happened down in the Valley of Texas, uh, and, and a t- right outside of a small town called Westlaco. Um, and this happened back in 2000 and, uh, 2006. And I, it was from Alonzo and Miguel. And these two guys were hanging out together. They had just come from their friends they were having a little after party, and like I said, it was right on the outskirts of town. Like the the towns are just kind of run together: McAllen, Edinburgh, Westlaco. They all just kind of like just one town runs into the next. And and I've spent a lot of time down the valley. I have a lot of friends down there. I have friends that own bars and clubs down there, and I haven't been down there in a while. I need to go down there. But uh, I got this story, and this guy Alonzo. I don't know him personally, but he's actually the stepbrother. Um, of a good of a good friend of mine. So he told me he's like, my stepbrother's got a story to tell you. Now here's what's crazy, and th- this one is is like I got I got to get y'all's opinion on this one. Um, they were getting in their car, like I said, leaving a party, and I'm not gonna lie, they're leaving a house party. They had been vibing a little bit, you know, um, but they were like really uh, like kept reminding me that they weren't drunk. They weren't drunk. They'd only had a couple drinks and they were heading to another party because that party was kind of lame or whatever. And it was on the outskirts of town and not in a bad spot either. Like the, it wasn't like, you know, it was just, it was, they were hanging out in some, you know, horrible place where you would expect something bad to happen. And they were like, no, this was, you know, right there in, in between the two towns or like, you know, it was kind of like, uh, so anyway, they were getting in their car and they said that this guy, it looked like he was walking around the outside of a house across the street. And they were like, does this guy, and, and it was so weird. They said that the legs looked really tall and long, but, and his upper body looked like short and normal. And he looked like a Hispanic guy. There's a lot of Mexican Americans down there. And, um, they thought it was a, a, a Hispanic dude, you know, and they thought he was wearing some sort of like costume on his lower body, like stilts. Well, Miguel, the guy that was in the, the the passenger side, he got in and he looked and he goes, dude, he's like, there's something like coming off the bottom of this guy's feet when he walks. And so when you had talked about that, that was really weird. And when this thing noticed him, I say this thing, I don't know what it was, this creature, this guy, whatever, noticed him, it began to sprint full force towards them. And they were like, why is this guy running towards us? And then so his friend just took off like real fast. And they were actually supposed to be waiting for his sister. But his sister was still in the house, as they said, you know, just kind of lollygagging around. She, was, she wasn't she was doing what she was supposed to be doing, like getting out there and going. And so they were like she was, you know, messing around with her, her what I guess would become her boyfriend. And they and so they and they weren't moving their butts. So they just took off. They were like, you know what? They can, she can ride with him. And this guy, and I'm talking in a residential neighborhood, but it was dark, uh, ran alongside their vehicle for like a good 50 yards. He said, dude, it was crazy. This guy was like running alongside us. And it was like, according to Miguel, who's who got a better angle at, he was the one on the passenger side of of the front seat. He said that it looked like the dude had like, thick hair, but not, he wouldn't call it fur. And he said that 
from the time when he first saw this thing, this guy thing, whatever, he said that his face had kind of elongated and it was, it, it looked like a partial snout had grown out of his face. And he was like, dude, what is that? It's a bad word. <laughs> you know, and he, the guy driving was like, I don't know, man. And he goes, dude. And then it started like to kind of forearm and hit the car, which it, they weren't driving in a really large car. Um, and so when he, and it was actually a uh, Camaro and it was a restored, it was a really nice restored Camaro that his dad had had that had given him as a birthday present. And so it knocked him up onto the curb and then, you know, and then they got back onto the road and then they turned real quick on a sharp curve, you know, and, uh, this thing kind of gave chase and then it was behind him and then it just kind of veered off. Alonzo, the guy driving, he goes, I'm looking in the rearview mirror. And when I looked in the rearview mirror at it, it looked like a full on werewolf. Like it became a werewolf. And so they compared notes and they were driving. And I guess they said they pulled into like the Sonic or something like that. I can't remember what exactly what the, there or was a Whataburger or something. They pulled in. And they were just sitting there like breathing hard, like, what did we just see? What did, what was that? He goes, they thought it was a guy like in a costume with like b big long legs. And then the upper body began to, to grow taller. And he said, by the time it was done stretching out, it was about seven and a half to eight feet. And they saw it in the rearview mirror, both of them. And Miguel, you know, and he was kind of, I think he was trying to, <laughs> no offense to you, Miguel, I think you were trying to save face. So you were like, I had a gun on me, man. I was trying to reach under the seat to grab it. And then Alonzo told me, that ain't true. He's like, <laughs> he goes, he was 17. I was 18. We didn't have no gun in there. You know, and he was like talking about he was going to pull it out. And he was like talking about slow down. He was going to do this. And his buddy kind of shot the holes in that, that whole Clint Eastwood story. <laughs> and if you guys are out there listening, you know I, I'm not. And I'm just, this is what happened. And they kind of razz each other. They're still really good friends to this day. It happened a long time ago. But they were just like, he goes, that, ain't, that didn't happen at all. He was not telling me to slow down. He goes, he was in my lap trying to trying to <laughs> practically drive, screaming, telling me to move faster, and why couldn't I drive this thing faster? And he's like, this car, it, it, we're going to end up wrecking into somebody's privacy fence. But it was in a residential neighborhood, dude, this thing. And it, and it literally, for my money, it was morphing into something. And now – the the footfall the reason i bring this story up and 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 what you had talked about because the footfall was was producing like a yellow a really quick yellowish white light they said with like a weird looking silvery smoke it wasn't green okay but that i have talked to multiple people about that and other researchers and other authors and other people who've witnessed this linda godfrey had witnessed the not witnessed but had a witness a couple of them who had given her stories about a green mist that surrounded these creatures. And I got a story uh, that's pretty, pretty uh, become pretty popular and it happened near the lake down by the docks. And y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, Anthony, Tony. And this, that thing, it, it was, it was giving off a green mist and I, it was definitely a werewolf encounter and it happened to a pest control guy and a security guard friend of ours. Um, and so it was just so uh, bizarre and now talking to Lon Strickler, he had told me that there was like a couple stories that where there was this silvery mist. And when we interviewed him about that and some of the witnesses he had interviewed, and we've gotten both and blue, we've had and we've had these things coming out of orbs. So I tend to agree with you about the supernatural aspect of it. When I was younger, for years, I thought it was like a flesh and blood thing that was just always that way. But knowing what I know now. I don't believe that that's the case. And now what do you guys, I mean, Matt, uh, I'll go start with you. I mean, what do you think when you hear that story? Like, I mean, do you feel like that had that, that thing could be anything like what you saw? Uh, I mean, uh, it sounds to me more or less like a skinwalker and, and the description I've heard of how skinwalkers can, can morph into different animals and stuff. And seeing that happen physically, like, to a to a, a a human looking type person for the most part upper body wise as you said and having the snout stick out man that would be beyond messed up so um you know it could end up into into an animal similar to what we saw uh when i was younger um i think those are two different 
beast there, boy. Yeah. I think that was a skinwalker. I actually uh, think skinwalkers are weaker too because it's it's an imitation. Like at the, at the end of the day, I think that's what it is, and you can't like really do anything perfectly. So I think uh, when they, I know, I know, I know a bartender over at Arash's Bar that would disagree with you about their weakness. It one well, I mean, her up. compared to us, it doesn't obviously, but like I think like these real predators, like the ones that don't have to shift into this this being, are just naturally this being no matter where they come from i think like they're way more in tune with it and they're it'd be like if you're growing up with both arms compared to someone with only one not too long ago we talked to a guy who actually claimed that his uncle was a werewolf and he saw him and his friends shifting in their in their garage out in the country out there well i mean i i I don't know. I mean, people there, and, and he said that it was a shaman that was teaching his, his his uncle how to do it, and they had told him that they were going to kill people. He was a kid when That's he said, "Yeah, it's messed up. I'm real messed Great up." Great thing to tell a kid. Well, I mean, if you're a skinwalker, what do you care? <laughs> you killed right, a loved one right. to get there. I mean, but that but that was that's weird. And then you get these stories of werewolves and. I think I get a little more of the werewolf stories because a lot of these uh, dogman uh, researchers and storytellers and people that get there, they don't they don't really want to entertain that. They want to pretend like that part of it doesn't exist. And it's like, dude, there are people who have these encounters. Now, here's another one. Now, Anthony, did you want to weigh in on this before we go to the next one? I'm kind of on the on board with what Tony said. I think that whenever we're dealing with something that involves shape shifting, shape shifting into one of these bipedal wolf like creatures that is a skinwalker and um that they're taking that form. But we have to remember that this is a human taking an unnatural form. Whereas I believe that sometimes when people see these things, they're not seeing skinwalkers. What they're seeing is a being that has always been and will always be what that is. It's always been that form. It's a spiritual entity that has never been human, that will never be a human being, that is in its element and doesn't require any sort of ritual sacrifice, any sort of like magic or any, anything. It's like a demon or a Nephilim, yeah. I believe that what Matt saw is a being that it just is that what would, it is that might you know? be even why well put well said i i agree with you 100 yeah. percent. i was gonna say yeah. that might be why like you didn't hear the popping on on yours as well wolf is because like these are more these magic. are already like and like these other ones have to use magic well, to be able to make with, their with body alonzo work and miguel way. i didn't ask them about the popping because yeah. their windows were rolled <laughs> up and well you know of course you know miguel's tough he was he was looking for a gun oh yeah that he didn't, was ready well, his friend says it didn't exist, but in Miguel's mind, he was going to go Rambo on it. RPG ready. He was. He was. He was <laughs> like. He's like, oh, you want war? Okay, what's up? You know, he was like, well, so that's going on over there. Did, how was the car? Did he when he formed? Did, did he do damage? It hit the window, oh, okay. but didn't break it. Oh, I, I mean, thought like know? he hit the like just. Yeah, and and th that was another thing too. Like you know, I guess like the way he, the way it hit it, part of his arm hit the top of it. You know, the frame and just m moved him. And it, but also talking to the driver, like he had said that he kind of swerved, swerved too, away, yeah, yeah, to get away from it because he was messing up his car. Yeah. And then they thought, what in the heck is that? You know, bad word. And he goes, that thing's going to go and kill somebody or somebody's pets or something. You know. And then it just veered off and was gone. It probably had other things to do. And I've heard now people tell me this. Now I had a Native American uh, tell me this who was on the Ute reservation. And he said that the Navajo, now of course this is a Ute and Navajos don't always get along. And y'all know who I'm talking about with the Ute. It was a friend of mine. But he told me that when they tra change they, their, their mind, they can keep their mental faculties. But during the change, they go crazy. And they'll just go after and attack anything until they can get their bearings. Yeah, I'm sure the pain is unimaginable. And they're taught too, you know, as children to be, on those reservations to be very leery of these things because they're real. We had my cousin Trey on talking about the Wind River Reservation because he used to go out with a Shoshone woman, and and they were very real to them. I mean, they, they, all the cultures of they have these shapeshifters and whatever. And so you, when you start delving into these stories, I just thought it was interesting that they saw what looked like some sort of light coming off the bottom of his feet, like with or paws or whatever they were, 
the backward bent legs. And and that's what attracted it to them at first, and that's why they thought, man, it's like and 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 honestly, the, uh, Miguel said he thought it was like a, a raver dude, like wearing pants who was coming from the party. He's that's like, why some, didn't like, we see that guy? You know, we didn't see this guy inside there. You know, like what's he doing? And so yeah, he was the light up schedulers. He comes rolling over on, hey guys, <laughs> mind if I bite you? <laughs> But uh, no, uh, he can keep up with the car. That's scary. Too, yeah. Well, dude, I'm telling you, you. Go ahead, Tony. I was gonna say, like, do you think that maybe has something to do with why he was able to keep up? Is like that stuff, whatever it is, what, why ever they do it? Do you think like I think that it taps into something that like whether it's a it's this dog man phenomenon people talk about, or it's a werewolf, or it's a skinwalker. I've heard they're all different from different people, and everybody has their own take on it. A lot of the Native Americans will tell you that's just it's just skinwalker. That's all it is. And that's what they are. And then they'll they'll tell you that Bigfoot is a spiritual creature too. Um, and then there's people that'll say werewolves will act, you know, you can actually you change all the way. Now the late JC Johnson, he he said that there were people out there performing rituals and turning into werewolves and they were stuck. Like they can't get out. And that they would actually go and try to talk to their friends, and their friends are staring at this eight foot tall monster, and they're able to mind speak and say, "Look, I, this is me. Hey, it's me, Craig. I'm here, and I'm, I'm trapped. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're Craig. And you're like, oh, okay, Chucky or whatever their name is. You know? It's like, it's like, sorry, man, I guess you're stuck. You know? Um, and J.C. Johnson had told me that, and that it was very possible for skinwalkers to do the same thing, but him, like a lot of people, they they made like this distinction between these different creatures, and now. That's like, you know, th there are distinctions between, you know, all types of animals. A dog is not a coyote and a coyote is not a wolf. And but know? even in that all own, canines. even in that own little thing is like there's a million different I'm not a million obviously, but there's a bunch of different coyotes who all have different little coy wolves and everything mm -hmm. else, yeah. So we've discussed that case and let me give you another one. Now, this one happened to a guy, and I know this this subject is near and dear to Anthony's heart because he just loves bicyclists. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say like the little tiny people or whatever. No, 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 no. Everyone else, I love them too. <laughs> the, what do you have against the Duende besides them being evil and demonic? I mean, geez. Yeah. Because if Why you're going you to so be, be evil and demonic, how dare you be smaller than me? That is true. Oh, oh Just the gall of these things. <laughs> these little these short things. Stomp you into a blade. Dude, anyway. I'm going to tell you right now, I went into the restroom the other day over there at that place. Uh, they sell they sell uh, food and stuff in there, and we met that one guy. The guy that was kind of telling me a story from uh, Azerbaijan or whatever. Yeah. The, uh, yeah he, he's an Afghani, but he lived in that. Okay, so anyway, I go in there, and it, there's like somebody has tagged up the restroom. You probably saw it, Ant. They said Duende. Yeah, and I was like, "That's crazy, man!" <laughs> Somebody uses that as their handle. That's like really evil. But anyway, back back to what we we're talking about. You know, like th this this story. Um, the people, the guy that told me this story, it, it was like very adamant um, that this is like this really happened, and he kept reminding me, you know, that he's not crazy. And I'm like, "Oh well, we'll see." Nah, I didn't do that <laughs> to him. I didn't, I wasn't like that. I don't know if you're a cyclist, you probably you probably are a little bit well, nutty. <laughs> You know, and, and, and so and so I told him, I said, I, I, I want to talk to this guy, but I told him, I said, my nephew um, hates bicyclists. And he goes, well, well, tell him I'm not even a bicyclist anymore because- <laughs> Well, to be fair, uh, I hate everything on two wheels, including motorcycles. <laughs> Get out of my way. Uh, okay. Learn to drive like a big boy. So, okay. At least he's consistent. <laughs> well, you know, and, and this guy, he had a terrifying experience. And what happened was he was riding his bike and he was over off of Jollyville, okay, and and it was it's 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 not like a super busy area at night. I'd say after probably mm, 10, 11, it's probably not that busy. Um and then it's not especially after covid, it's not really like it, and it's not but it, but it is a pretty well trafficked area and when I've driven through there, you know, at, at 10, 11 at night, I've actually encountered uh cyclists which may have been him. But I told him I said there was this one guy who just wouldn't get out of my way and I was like and he was his name's Brett, he's a nice guy. Um, but he lived here in Austin when this happened or whatever work has taken him to North Texas. But, um, this happened only a few years ago. Well, I think it was like 2015 or something like that. But anyway, oh, well, that's actually a lot more than a few years. The time flies when you're old. But, uh, so he was riding his bike and he goes, dude, I, I I'm riding my bike and I pull up on what looks like a homeless guy walking just, you know, tall, lanky guy swinging, you know, his arms, whatever. And he was coming out, walking out of what it looked like apartment complex. And at first he goes, I thought he was wearing a backpack and I thought it was just a homeless dude. 
And so I was riding my bike, and, and the guy turned real quick and was in front of me. He goes, and then I noticed, like, the legs, and I thought, that doesn't look right. The legs look backward bent and kind of kind of weird. He was kind of tall and gangly. And he said, dude, he had long, skinny arms, and then he noticed, like, his his hands looked weird when he would walk by the streetlight. Like I said, he was walking out of one of these apartment complexes, and he said that when he was riding up on him, he noticed, like, he goes, this person is really hairy, and they're not wearing clothes. <laughs> and he was like, what is this? And so he said that when the, the, the thing kind of turned, uh, the guy, creature, I don't know what it is, turned and kind of looked at him. He said he rode his bike around it to go buy it. He said that this thing was, like, very tall. He said it was pro- – I said, what, seven, half, eight feet? He goes, no, taller than that because he goes, as I got closer, it seemed like it gotten taller. Like it grew like taller. And he said when it turned and looked at him, it had a, not a real long muzzle. It was it was short and kind of stubby, the muzzle. But he said the ears were like human ears, but they were sticking straight back and up behind the head. And it looked like a long-haired guy, but his hair had kind of like, I don't know, like from the first time he saw him, he goes, I look, and it was kind of going into a ridge over the back of its head, and he, or his head, He because he, he saw – you know, that it was a male. And then he looked and he said, dude, this thing had, a, it, it had a snout. He goes, and I'm like, and when it turned, it looked at me and it looked like one of its eyes was messed up and kind of turned outward. Like it was like, it, you just saw like the, like the eye was messed up. Yeah. It was crooked or. Yeah. Like, like he said that like where the pupil would have been, it was like toward the end, the, the, the far oh, okay. side of the eye. And so it, it was probably blind in one eye and, and it looked, he said it looked kind of scraggly. That was his words. Like, you know. Um, so I said, you know, did it look like a homeless guy? He goes, not anymore. And, but it was carrying something. And I was like, what was that? He goes, well, it had a hoodie on. And he said that it was like in the the process of pulling it over its head, off of its head. And that's when he rode by. That's how he saw the features of it. And he said there was no pants. Um, and then he said that it was carrying what looked like a cooler, like a, cause this was summertime. They said it was like in August and it was carrying like a cooler. Like a, like a blue and white one. And he said that this thing turned and looked at me and he goes, and then it, it just dropped the the stuff it was carrying and kind of got down on all fours. He goes, and dude, and I just like zipped across the street really fast. And he's like, right when I did, I look up and right there to the right. And he goes, I wasn't even paying attention. I was, I was, there was a truck, an oncoming truck. And he's like, dude, I just like got out of the way as best I could and got, I hit the curb and went up on the curb with my bike and he said that this truck rode by, and when he looked across the street, it was gone. Now, I asked him about that, and I said, this thing, did it, you know, do you think it just vanished into thin air into another dimension, or do you think that it was hiding? He goes, I think it was hiding. And he said, it was almost like you're in the water, and, and you, you're, he goes, imagine if you were like, you know, 200 yards from, from you know, the shore, but say the water is like waist deep. Now he said, but he went into the, the Caribbean, like he got, he walked way out to where the water was like still like, like just up to his chest. And then he saw a shark. And so this happened to him one time. And he said he had to like, like kind of walking and swimming, but he's looking around to see where it went. You know, he said that terror was, it was the same thing. I'm going like, dude, this thing is around me somewhere. And so he goes, I turned around and I just, I just booked it for the uh, hookah lounge. Y'all know where that's at. It's over there by the uh, Mediterranean place. Um, and he said when he went in, I know exactly where he's talking about. I said, oh, I know where you went. And he said, yeah, I, I, I booked it into there. And I called my girlfriend. This was kind of embarrassing. And she was at work. She's a nurse. And so she sent her sister to go pick him up. And <laughs> he was like, she was like, so what, did, what happened? He told her. And she just goes, uh-huh. Like, <laughs> you know, so she was convinced that he saw a homeless man and you overreacted. Yeah. But he told me, he goes, this is not a homeless person. No way. No how. That is not what this was. And so that story was like, uh, you know, just really bizarre. But your thoughts? I mean. Well, either way, even if it was a homeless guy, if I look back and a homeless guy dropped all his stuff and just suddenly disappeared, I'd still be freaked out. I'd be like, okay, where the heck did he go? So, like, even in, in that case, I can understand that fear coming in. But in the case of it just being the way it was, you know what it reminds me of? Of a story you told a while back about this were coyote, the rotting one. Um, oh, the one from uh, Missouri. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. yes. And th- th- that's what it kind of reminds me of is like some, uh, one of these shape shifters. All they did, they just drove by and saw it. Yeah, yeah. just losing its powers and slowly uh, it was disintegrating. Rotting. Like it was yeah. rotting, yeah. And that's what kind of like this thing is like, it's not at that stage yet to where like it's completely falling apart. Because like I said, I don't think they can keep that form and I don't think they, like I think there's certain things they have to do to be able to control it. That was the zombie werewolves. That, that we, yeah. did, we did. A, did we did a show on that, or what was that about? I don't remember. Was it the one with the skeleton arms? Yeah, yeah it yeah. did. It did. Like one of one of the arms had like you could see the bone on it and stuff. Yeah, and I went over that Wasn't case. Like the eye hanging with D. A. Roberts, like huh? Wasn't like the eye missing or? I think so. I, I got to yeah. go back and, you know, once I do the show, I don't always, I got to go back and look it up. Didn't we put that like on a Not Deer episode or something? No, like no, that? no, 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 no. That was not Deer. That like... was recent, man. And then that was the kid from Corpus. Remember he gave us that story about the, about the zombie werewolf that they saw or whatever mm-hmm. they thought it was. It was rotting looking. I mean, yeah, that that's crazy, man. What are your thoughts, Matt? What do you think about this? I, I mean, that. Is is definitely touching on like a, a supernatural type thing, and he never said it like came at him or after him. He mm-hmm. just saw no. it, right? Yeah, it, but it got down like it was going to, and, and he, it was like the truck saved us. Yeah, like, he rode off in front of a truck. He said, I "Almost got hit by the truck," but the thing, I guess, I, I think the reason it would disappear like that is because it doesn't want to be seen by the other person. Like it's already been seen by him. Mm-hmm. Doesn't want to be seen. Right. I think that's you know. Thanks. I told him, I said, if you ever come across a guy with his eye messed up like that, <laughs> and he's like, do you remember me, buddy? Uh, you know, uh, well, it could be, you know. So I, I've also. I, I would have asked, actually, though, was the truck a, a, a what is your truck? Toyota Tundra at the time? Then if we might have we seen it, too. <laughs> I, I, I would be like, I told my wife, I was like, dude, if we're driving along and there's like somebody panhandling and their eye is messed up like that, never trust I'm it. running that red yeah, light. I'm sorry. It. I'm not stopping there to talk to this individual. Because You're not going to be stuck with that guy uh, from uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Thanks for the ride, lady. <laughs> Man, it was <sighs> like, I could tell you, uh, I, there was a lot of things that I could put up with. But like, no, I'm not doing that. I mean, yeah. first of all, you know, I don't like being because I've gotten so many. I've gotten so many stories of people that are out walking their dog at night, or security guards doing their checks, even my own guards, and they see crazy stuff. Like I got a dog man story of of one in a swimming pool, a swimming pool. Okay, and I'll tell you that one real quick here. It's not a real long one. But it was crazy. Okay, so I, I own. I have security. Company. I have friends who also own companies and they work security. And, and we're rivals with a couple. We're friendly with them though. We work and we do work with them too. We cross work or whatever. We, we do whatever. And one of our our friends who who as a security company he had a guy who used to work for him. And this guy's name was Dion. I remember that. And uh, he was telling me something. It was back when we had uh, what was that place Rio Lotto. Yeah. And he was sitting there telling me one night that he was doing patrol. And he goes, dude, because we were talking about dog man, werewolves and all this stuff. And uh, I had been doing a lot of research on it, you know, and I had uh, corresponded with Linda Godfrey. And I had just read Barton Nunley's book in Humanoids on Pose, which was bad idea. Good idea to read the book, but bad idea to do it there. And so this is a very desolate place, and it was a, a, an abandoned apartment complex. Oh, yeah, Rio Lotto has some creepy energy. Spooky, spooky You know place. bad things happened there because it was in a bad well, I, neighborhood. I know it did because I worked there in the mid-'90s, and there was a shooting. One kid shot another kid because they were teenagers. And I, and I ended up was working that night, and I and I'd just gone to the store, and there were two guards. There were three of us there with a dog. And I had gone to the store to get, like, some snacks or whatever, and I come back, and there's I hear it bang, bang, bang. So I jumped in the car and drove back over there, and there was a shooting. So that area over there, like I literally thought I heard noise one time right there by where that shooting, and I, it was creepy just walking by there, knowing that that's where it had happened. But anyway, that's an, it's it's a it was a really bad place, and and it was one of those like they would change the name. I don't know what it was when we had it. It was called something else. We, it was called always Real Lotto to me, but it was like a bad place. And there was all kinds of like people shooting each other and doing all kinds of drugs and stuff. And so this guy, he comes over and he tells me, he says that years ago, this is, this was back, you know, years ago when this happened, but he said years before he was working security and he was working on the East side. And he said, he goes, I go into one of these complexes and I don't remember which one it was now. They all changed names. But he said that he saw, he goes, I see this, what I can only describe what I first thought was a man in a costume jumping the fence. And then as he 
ran toward the pool, I was like, hey. And then he goes, and then I turn and I look, or it turns and it looks at me. Things got a snout. And it just jumped into the swimming pool. And I said, what did you do? He goes, nothing, dude. He goes, I turned around and I got back in my truck and I wrote in my report that I that I saw a dog in the pool, but it appeared vicious. And I was... <laughs> I was like, so that was the end of it. And I was thinking about doing a, a like a sidelight, you know, on my live stream where we just talk about gaffes because people have sent me funny stories. Like I've read them to you the other day, Anthony. And uh, I thought that one would be a, a funny one. But then I also thought I'm going to squeeze it in at some point. But it was a very short encounter. Like he just got, he, he, he sees this werewolf walking or running towards the swimming pool and it jumps in. And at the last minute he yells and it looks up at him and he thinks, oh my gosh, that's not a costume. That, that's a snout, and those are dog ears, and I'm about to get killed. And he said it started, like, moving toward him really quickly, and so he just, like, was gone. Like, he goes, I left, and he goes, and I just I, – and I, and I asked to be pulled off of that route, and I didn't never told him why. And I was Bart like, so man. you decided to come to my site and tell me, well, I got four more hours left on my <laughs> ship at real life. I want to be here, always hearing weird – and there was always some dog howling out there, too, which made it even – remember, Anthony? Yeah. There like was like consistently, consistently, it was always out there, arr, like in the distance. And I'm thinking, is this thing going to come and attack me, or is it going to keep doing that? Thank goodness it just did That's that. That's freaky. Yeah, yeah, but that that actually reminds me of uh, the story I told you about that little ghost thing I saw. And where I just drove off. Oh yeah, down like, in Brackenridge. As far as I'm concerned, that's a good security guard. I mean, we we <laughs> we, we protect against the normal. That, yeah, we're, we're not here for the supernatural. Yeah. Yeah, they don't the, pay, they don't pay us enough to be escorting werewolves and the off properties. There were huge. Oh my gosh, they were those coyotes were huge. I was over there. I was I was doing push ups on the back of my truck, trying to stay somewhat in shape, you know, instead of the shape of a beach ball. And and I look, and there's this two coyotes, and I'm like, oh, they're getting really close. And then they got closer. And then I at that point, I was like, oh, okay. So I thought I'm gonna have to to defend myself. And eventually, I picked up a rock and I threw it, and they got the point. But I couldn't believe. I have a picture still. Uh, I do too, and I have them like they right outside my window. Like they come right up to your vehicle. Yeah, they they're not eat, scared they at all. And I was like, those. I don't think they're koi wolves though. I think they were just coyotes. But they were large. We get big coyotes here in Texas. Big. Like they're everybody says that. Too, right. Oh gosh, yes. They, they, they don't. They're vermin, dude. For real, they don't. Mm -mm. Yeah, they're no. they're just really a menace. So let me get let me get one more story in before we got to wrap it up here. Now here here this one here we're talking about apartment complexes. Um, I got a couple. We got time for one. Which one should I tell you? The one the one I think the homeless camp one, or should we tell the, the one homeless camp one okay. is really good? I think because the other one the it. guy might have been more of a werewolf story too. But uh, well th this one's a little bit longer though. I don't know if I have time to tell that one. Um, they're both pretty pretty in depth. Okay, I'll tell I'll tell the one with the homeless cam. Okay, now this one and he named it Copperfield or something like that, and and I don't know what it's called now because we know as well as anybody that the, that the they slap a coat of paint on it and they change the apartment name to yeah. I mean they don't even do whatever. that anymore. They just kind of just put up new signs and make it look like it's a nicer <laughs> yeah, place, they, but they it's the it, same old. They oil the gold. gate. Yeah, yeah, and give it like some some pretty name, Silver Springs, and then you yeah. look at it and it's just a mud it, it's pit, not even Sunshine, silver or springs. And and then and the funniest one is the one down the road from where we used to live, where they have the gates, and but then there's no like fence around it, <laughs> and then you could just drive around it. It's like what what is that? Like what is the <laughs> point the of point? that? Yeah, what's the point? I mean, you're just like wasting your time. But uh, anyway, th this one happened. This guy gave me this story, and he now lives uh, outside of Austin, and I don't blame him. He, he moved. But um, he I mean, he took a job. But he's like, dude, I, li I live in Arizona now. So he goes, I'm gone. Good riddance, you know, whatever. But when he was a young guy, um, and, I, and like I think he said it was like 20 years ago, because he's like my almost my age now, and he was like in his early 20s. So it was like 20 years ago. But he was living in this apartment complex, and he lived on the third floor. And uh, he said back then, you know, it wasn't th – there were homeless people, though. There was there was quite a few. But it, it it's gotten steadily worse and worse and worse. And he said and back then, they all lived in those woods. And now there's like a couple complexes that we do security at down south. Um, and I think you've done one of them. Okay. Yeah, it's off of, of right there by Old Tour or whatever. And so, anyway, he said the name of the, the complex back then was called Copperfield or something like something like that. Or it might have been Copper Tree. Anyway, they, they they there was a camp behind there, 
like a little group of homeless people, you know, what he what he called a hobo camp. And I said, yeah, I, I remember there always being problems back there in that area because that whole area had like some at that time they were a little a more upscale apartments. He said, yeah. He goes, it was it was a nicer apartment complex. He goes, but I lived on the third floor, and he had a friend that lived across the hall from him. And uh, he said that, you know, that they were good friends and they would talk. And sometimes he, when you went out on your balcony, you could talk to him from the other side of the balcony, whatever. And they would, would listen to these uh, people in the homeless camp yelling and screaming and making noise. And sometimes they would hear like growling and vicious howls and or vicious growls and howls or whatever. And he said that he was dating this girl. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. He said, but, you know, they were – you know, they would hang out and whatever. And he said that, that at one point she had, he had invited her over and she, she showed up, uh, called him and said she was outside. Um, but that she, and then she left. And so he was like, okay, that's, that's weird. You know, this is, you know, and, uh, so he tried calling her back and she didn't answer whatever. And he said that he found out why later on. And now he, what he told me was a crazy story. Um, I say crazy, but like it was, it was just, it was nuts. It was like there was something going on at the homeless camp. And one day when he was being dropped off, um, he saw a guy walk up out of the woods with only a t-shirt on, no pants. And he thought, oh my gosh, this is getting too much. And then they had people that were bathing in the sprinklers or whatever. <clears throat> and so he, he turned, you know, the guy turned around and walked off and he said, dude, and like I said, this is uh, this was 10 years ago. Did I say 20 years ago? Or this was 10. I think it was about 10 years ago. Anyway, it, it happened about 10 years ago. Um, so he goes, I'm, how old am I? Jeez, I can't even keep track. And so this guy was in his 20s. So yeah, eh, but he, I think it was about 10 years ago. So he's not my age, folks. I'm, I apologize. So anyway, he's probably in his 30s, not as old as me, but – Anyway, I told him, I said, once you're my age, you've seen everything anyway. And I thought he was, you know, once our age, whatever. This this guy told me, he says, dude, that wasn't the worst thing he'd seen. That was just one of the annoying things. Dude. There was other things. And we know as well as anybody being in Austin, there's there's a homeless problem here with the people. And they, they can be really uh, dangerous. They can be belligerent. They attack people. They do all kinds of things. And I think a lot of it is mental illness. And I'm not saying that all homeless people are like that. I know homeless people that are just homeless because they have no no choice. But uh, they can be kind of dangerous, you know. And he said that this this it, that this night though it took the cake. He said he went upstairs, and I'll tell you why. He's like, I my wiener dog jumped out of bed and wouldn't stop. He kept going to the door or whatever, and so he finally he goes out to the balcony. He lets him run out, and he's barking, barking. He won't quit. And his name's Maxwell, and he says my dog Maxwell wouldn't stop barking. He goes, so I decided to have a cigarette, and I'm standing out there, and I hear what sounds like screams from someone being killed. And then he hears, like, this loud growling and howling and all, like, once again, you know. And this snapping, which he couldn't tell if it was, like, loud tree snapping branches or if a person was being killed. So he goes, uh, calls the police, you know, and then he goes back to bed and just leaves it alone. And then a couple nights later... Same scenario. He comes home, goes upstairs, but this night he decided to call his female friend um, to come over and hang out, whatever. And she's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. You can come to my house. And he goes, well, I can't. I've been drinking. And so um, I'd have to get a ride. And and I guess this was like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, whatever. It was a it was years ago. And he he's like, we didn't have Uber and all that. Like it wasn't readily available and cabs were very expensive and he goes, and I was broke. I didn't I just didn't have the money to go. So I talked her into coming and picking me up. And she said, okay, but be be sure and hurry up and be, you know, downstairs. So she didn't live that far away. So he started to head down the stairs and he hears this scream. But it sounded the other night it had sounded like a female. Now it sounds like a guy. So he he goes upstairs and he knocks on his neighbor's door. His neighbor was named Joe. He said, Joe comes and he says, Hey. He had these night vision goggles, and he said these were relatively like new to civilians at that time. It was like a really cool thing, like you know, you could to have these or whatever. Now everybody can get them for you know, it's easy, you know. But he said this guy was former military, so he takes him in there into his apartment, and he goes onto the balcony, and he looks, and he can see the people through the woods. He can see them, 
And he said it looked like one of them had, was like trying to, to fight what looked like a guy that was on the ground. But when this guy stood up, he said, dude, I was looking at a werewolf. Like it was absolutely a werewolf. It was tall, had a big, huge canine like head. It had these backward bent legs. And I saw it just move its head toward the guy and just what it looked like, just bite a big chunk out of his neck and his shoulder. And he said that it was like, next thing you know, the guy was on the ground. He goes, I run to my neighbor and I said, come here, you got to see this. And so he hands him the, the 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 goggles and he looks and his girlfriend's his neighbor's girlfriend's standing and she's like, I want to see, I want to see, you know. And everybody's trying to look and they're like, oh, we gotta call the police. So they call the police and they're sitting there looking at this guy, what looks like he's at this point, he's on all fours, looks like a malformed wolf, giant looking wolf. And he, it's devouring what used to be a person. It's what it looked like it was doing. And he goes, we're all witnessing this. You know, we're all seeing this and we're frantic. We called the police. He goes, this then my, my, my date showed up. He goes, and I said, man, I got to go tell her what's up. And he said, then the police came while she was there. So they got a statement from him and she was standing there by the car. And he says, sorry, you know, I know you wanted me to whatever. And he goes, dude, he goes, I was so shooken up that when we got back to her place, all we did was just hang out and talk, which that wasn't his plan. I was going to say that. You know, and he goes, I couldn't do anything but just sit there and talk with her. And he goes, and I was so like freaked out, you know, and he goes, and I told her what happened, you know, and, and, and so the next day she says, look, I got to tell you something. And he, he's like, he's like, okay. And she's like, you know, that night that I told you, and she had made up an excuse when she pulled up and that night that he had, and he had come down and she had left and she was so scared. She didn't answer the phone, you know. Um, he, she, she said that she had finally, when she finally did answer and told him, she said she, that her sister had gone to the hospital. She just made up a story and she's like, I don't like to lie. I'm not, I'm not a liar. She goes, but I want to come clean. She's like, I saw something and it was in y'all, in y'all's mail area where you get your mail. And he said where, where the mail place was, it was by the woods. And there was something standing there between the mailbox, uh, mailbox, uh, what do you call them? The two mailbox walls, whatever. I don't know what you would call it. Like it's it's like in between. Like you know how they they look. A lot of them, the apartment complexes. But anyway, the way he described it, it was like there was a wall on one side, you know, with pillars, and then another wall on the other side with pillars, and it was their mailboxes, and it was covered like a little a you know like a little A shape, whatever. And she said that there was this thing, a uh, creature, whatever, was like underneath the the awning, whatever. And she said it. I thought it was a man at first that was squatting down and she thought that this is a homeless guy and he was trying to take a poop. And she's like, I'm uh, like looking at this thing and I'm like, is this guy taking a poop? What's he doing? And then she said when it looked up, like its head was down and it had like these really like hairy hands with, with long nails. And she thought that is weird. Like, but she said that it lifted its head up and that's when she realized like that thing has a snout, that thing has a wolf's head, that thing this is a werewolf, you know? And she's like, it was like clicking in her head. And she just backed up and just took off because it looked right at her. And she said it had solid black eyes, like the whole, everything was solid black eyes. And it had really, really uh, like coarse looking hair. She didn't say it was fur. The way she described it to him, she said it looked like a man, but it was, you know, it had hair. And so he, he was really freaked out. And he was like, why didn't you tell me this? And she's like, I didn't want, I didn't know what to say. She's like, I didn't know anything about, you know, this werewolf in the homeless camp or, you know, or anything. So the next day he comes home, <clears throat> excuse me, the next day he comes home and there's uh, a, a card from a detective right there on the door and he, he picks it up and he looks at it and he calls the guy and the guy's like, can you give us any more details or whatever, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, no, I mean, that's all that, that I know that happened, whatever. So the detective says, okay, thank you. And then a couple of weeks go by. So then is th the girl that he was still kind of dating, um, she asked him, she's like, have you heard anything else? He's like, no, but I'll, I'll give the guy a call. And says, did you ever figure anything out? And the guy says, no, we pretty much closed the book on it. You know, all we found was blood. Now we did find a hatchet and a knife, but they, they looked like they were not like that, you know, and there was some clothing there, but they didn't look like they had been used. There was no blood on him or anything like that. 
Um, and they were like inside of a bag, like a duffel bag or whatever. And he says, you sure that, that this person didn't use, you know, cause there was blood everywhere. Yeah. And he said, all we were able to obtain was blood, no bones, no flesh, nothing. And he goes, no, this thing, you know, it, it looked like a, and the cop just kind of laughed and goes, okay, well, you know, if you have those, those night vision goggles, maybe I can look at them. And he said, well, go talk to my neighbor. So the guy comes back in the evening and he talks to the neighbor and he looks through them and he says, oh, these actually work pretty good. Because he thought maybe they weren't, they weren't seeing correctly what they saw. And he's like, are you guys sure that this looked like a wolf? And he's a little giant wolf on two legs. He's like, wow, that's, that's crazy. And then the cop just left and then he said, we're just, you know, there's nothing we can do. There's no body. There's nothing. There was just some, some blood and some stuff that looked like it belonged to a person. And so it makes you wonder, like, what that was, what what was going on there. And then he says, I feel bad not taking more of an interest before in the yelling and screaming that was going on in that homeless camp spot right there. Because this, this whatever it was. It have been happening for a while. Maybe, yeah, it may have been happening before right. that. Now, we have an apartment complex now that we do that's not far from sort of where the location is where he gave us. And we, we do a patrol there. But there's also we 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 do we had a standing guard there for a while. It's a very haunted place. Um, and it and anyway, that according to my patrol captain, she said that, and she's been on my live stream before talking about some of the weird ghost stuff that goes on that she's seen. But she said that there was bodies that that were found there like periodically when she had been doing patrol over the years. I don't know if the, you know if if that's true or not. You know I don't I haven't kept up with that. But that, that that area had been, um, they had found, you know, bodies. And I don't know in what condition or what, anything, you know. And that there were a couple residents that told one of my guards not too long ago that there was somebody that it, that they believe had been, there was a body. Um, but who knows? I mean, it's all rumor, you know, about, the, you know, we don't know. Um, but, you know, people going missing, homeless people, that would be pretty obvious. Like, I mean... If you were a werewolf, that would be the easy target, you know? It's so scary to think about because it's like, how long has that been happening before he finally saw it? Like, what if a werewolf is just coming in and picking a homeless guy every night and just because they're homeless, like, that, he just didn't care. Like, no one really cared to even investigate it or really put too much thought into it. Or they knew. Yeah. Yeah, that could be true, too. I mean, it could have been hiding out there, and then an argument started up. Okay, 2014. Mm. That's when it happened. I'm, I'm just tired, tired, so I didn't give the... So 2014, how many years is that? That's, that's, not, uh, nine. Oh, that's only nine years. Yeah, it's almost okay. a decade. Yeah, it's about a decade. Yeah. So so 10, 10 years ago, we still had the same homeless problem. I mean, it's just gotten worse now. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to say, Anthony? Oh, I was going to say, in his defense, if you hear a bunch of commotion coming out of a homeless camp, the average person is going to assume that that's like a drunken or or drug fueled argument taking taking place. Oh yeah, I can't blame him. It's just and also something that I don't get is that if you're one of these people living in this camp and this is a regular thing that's happening, I mean, like, why you don't think to move your camp? Right. What I would think would be the case would be. This guy maybe was taking people back to that camp and doing things to them, and nobody was paying attention. Nobody cared. What if? Or right. maybe there were more than one. There's also another possibility. This is mine. We've all put a little theory in. And, uh, <clears throat> but I was going to say, what if these things just kind of live in homeless camps? Like, I mean, if you really wanted to <clears throat> blend in but still live fairly and, like, not have – too many eyes on you, that would kind of be a really good place to do it because you're almost always ignored. Situations like this happen and you're like, no one really cares unless it's someone like us security who has to focus on those things. But like the normal civilian is just going to hear that, see that it's coming from the homeless camp and then do what you said is be like, Oh, well, I mean, I'm just not going to deal with that. So, I mean, it could have been hiding out here and then something, a fight popped up and it just went feral. I mean, it went crazy because whatever happened, happened. 
and, and then there's always the, the the wonder of what is it, you know, what <laughs> it's always the wonder. I mean, I mean, maybe in maybe this was just a you know, I don't, I don't know where maybe it was aware, maybe it wasn't. I mean, nobody's saying that they saw this thing change. You said this thing was laying on the ground and there was a guy standing there, and then the next thing it stood up and just began to eat him, yeah, <laughs> you know, so. There wasn't like a shape shift that any, that he could tell for sure, you know, it was anything like that. And then what was the thing that, you know, she saw, you know, and then, and then there's like, you know, you get all these short, small little stories, like a friend of, of ours has a bar called Spinners and, and he's actually seen a dog man too, or well, he doesn't really know what it was, werewolf, dog man, whatever. But he, he's one of the people that I'm, I've interviewed for my book and I think his story is pretty compelling because I know the guy very well, personally known him for years, and he's not like prone to fanciful whatever, you know. And so anyway, one of the patrons had would le- he had told me one of his patrons had left his bar, and they were driving go and they got onto that road. You know where Connolly High School is? Yeah, yeah. Right there behind My sister's Walmart. There. Yeah, so they're going like he's going like behind that. And so right there by Conley, he sees this guy like walking alongside the road and he's wearing a hoodie. And when he gets up next to him, he looks over and this guy's riding a motorcycle. This isn't in a car. Okay. And he looks over on the other side of the road and he sees this guy, what looks like he has a snout, but he couldn't tell if it was rat-like or wolf-like. And I go, was it in a, could it have been a costume? And this guy told Ash, no, dude, no, this wasn't no costume. Like, this is one of his regular customers. And he goes, dude, I saw, I don't know, a were rat or a were wolf or something. He's like, and then, and then he goes, but it had human like legs. And he goes, but, and it looked over at me and he goes, and the eyes were red. Like I looked right at it and it had red eyes. I mean, what the heck was that? And it was gray. And he was like, I don't, he was either a really old version of Master Splinter or it was some sort of werewolf. You know, and so, you know, my friend asked me what I thought. I was like, I have no idea, dude. I don't it was know what riding that is. A motorcycle. Do what? It was riding a motorcycle. You no, said? no, no. He he was. Oh, yeah, he, the, he was he riding wanted. it when he yeah, saw th- it. This thing was walking okay. on the side of the road. Yeah, okay. and I asked about clothing and whatever, and he said that he it it had like a shirt, like a t shirt, and I was like the the arms, you know, was just swinging by its sides, and I said, Did, were they covered in fur? And he goes, yeah. But not fur, it was more like hair, you know, and it was gray. And he goes, and you could see it. Like it had like, and I got to look at it, you know, and he goes, and it just kind of looked over at me and he goes, and it looked really, really evil. But it was wearing clothing, you know, and it makes you wonder because like I've heard stories of cloaking. I've heard stories of holographic, whatever. Um, like one lady gave me a story. I, this one goes way more in depth because she she's had multiple encounters but this happened up in Pennsylvania, and she said that there was this creature that was appearing since she was like seven years old, and it was in her driveway one day, basically terrorizing her and her older brother, who were hiding in the garage from it. And when the parents drove up, it just jumped off of the driveway and sat there by the fence looking at them like while the parents got out, and they came screaming, telling their parents, look out, look out, there's, you know, whatever. And what she said she did. She said her brother was uh, was cowardly and hid under a, sh- a table. But, you know, you, you and Leah would probably do the same thing, Tony. She'd be like, I was brave. And Tony hid, you know, which is probably true. Yeah. But- but <laughs> no, I just did the same thing as Banjo. I just used her as the bait. <laughs> so this thing, you know, was like just kind of sitting there. And, and she said that the mom and dad looked around and walked like right by it. And it was look, it was leering at them like, you know. Like, not her words, but mine, you know, but the, the way she said it just stared a hole through me. So it was like leering. And it wasn't, if the people didn't see it, like her parents did not see this thing. And it was like feet away from them. And she said, I was shaking. I was petrified. And I kept trying to point at it and say, Mommy, Mommy, look, you know, there's this thing right there. And she's just like, Oh, you know, stop being afraid, Paige. Just go inside. And she picked her up and like, you know, or the, or the dad picked her up and just kind of whisked, whisked her inside. And she, they, they, she said this thing went on, it went on for like a couple more weeks where this thing would show up and their parents, they would beg their parents, please don't go outside and walk the dog, you know? And then one day the dad was putting the leash on the dog and the dog ran out of the house. Uh, this was in a residential area. 
and the dog disappeared. That was it. They never saw it again. That's too bad. Yeah, and that and so he and the parents were like, "What do we do?" You know, and he's the the brother said, "Look, we told you there's this," and he just blurted it out, "this werewolf," you know. But how can it disappear to the parents and still be? you know, what looks like a flesh and blood creature to them. That's the big question. And, you know, th- there's so many different flavors of these creatures, man. You know, I've tried them all. I like the Cajun spice the best. That's kind of mine. I like uh, potassium mint. <laughs> I think you can't go wrong with a good lemon pepper dog, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. With some fava beans. No, but you know, it, it's funny. Like, it's like that, that picture is like that guy's wearing the Shao Kahn mask sitting in the car and it's like Louisiana's, uh, watching the skinwalker in his front yard, wondering if it tastes good with rice. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like, but you know, it, it's weird because like you get these stories and, and it's just so, they're so beyond the pale. And I've had people tell me too, they're like, I, I bring you my story because I know you're not going to ridicule me and you're willing to tell it. And they've even tried to tell other people and they're just like, oh, it's just too ridiculous, blah, 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 you know, because nobody wants to touch them. Nobody wants to say, hey, this is really happening to people. You know, and so a lot of people, and it's really sad because a lot of people will carry that pain inside. Not everybody's like you, Matt, and willing to just come out or me and just be like, yeah, I'll talk about when I was younger, I got lampooned, dude. I got messed with. I was called Wolf Boy. Some of my coaches were like, oh, Wolf Boy, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, I mean, it. I had to, to, to become Wolf. You know, I had to show people that, you know, look, I'm not Wolf Boy. I'm not out. I, this isn't it for me. I'm going to be Wolfman someday, you know. No, but you know, I mean, it just—I had to wear it as a badge of honor because what else can I do? I got ridiculed. I got made fun of. You know, first time after we saw it, and we went to a party, people were like, "Okay, tell us about the werewolf you saw." Come on, Teen Wolf, and blah blah blah. And I was like, "Okay, I'm not going to entertain this, dude." Like, you know, they didn't really mess with my friend so much because he didn't—he wasn't stupid like meeting around talking about it. And I said, okay, but they did some, you know, rasm, but, uh, it was just, we saw it and, and it was like, look, we told him, look, this really happened. You want to believe me? Don't believe me. And I got into some fights over it because people were just constantly messing with me. And so, you know, I learned to not talk about it. And then years later, my brother just got out of the army. He came to live with us and, uh, and never left. I'm just kidding. Anyway, he came (laughs) to live with us. He got out of the army And he had spent some time up in Michigan because that's where his mother was from. It's my half brother. And he was saying that, that he goes, you know, I was looking up everything I could about werewolves. And he goes, why don't you try dog man? And I was like, what the heck is a dog man? Well, when he lived up in Michigan, they had talked about this thing called the dog man. He goes, it's pretty popular up there. So on a whim, I just, this is years ago, you know, I decided to type in dog man and all this stuff came up, Beast of Bray Road, you know, all this different stuff. And uh, DER, the show, you know, I looked it up and I was like, dude, this is crazy. There's all this stuff on there. And so that's how I ended up getting on on that show and talking about what had happened to me. But by that point, I had collected a ton of stories. And I thought I was going to write a book at that time, but I couldn't physically write good because my fingers have all been broken. So I was like, why don't I do a podcast? You know, and my friend Armando kept saying, we got to do a podcast. Of course, he passed away from COVID. Um, God rest his soul. But he was like, you know, we should do a podcast. He kept pushing me to do it. He was real adamant that that like, I do it. That yeah, you do it. He was just a big fan of, I think, those shows. And he was just like, he, yeah, he, he was really a fan of you. my work and research exactly, too. Yeah. He was yeah, he was happy as a clam when I let him look at the archives. I was like, look at all the stuff I've collected over the years, you know, and all these people's uh, stories with the dates and names and stuff. And he was like, wow, this is crazy. Um, but I did a lot of work, you know, I had been putting in work for a while. Now I know sometimes you'll go and look at these people's bios and they're like, I'm 29 years old. I've been in the paranormal for 62 years, you know? Um, I was a paranormal investigator in my last life. As my well, last so. lifetime. I could see ghosts. I could see dog, man. I've already beat him up. Um, I'm looking for a unicorn. So I kill Bigfoot. You know? And you're just going like, okay, yeah, these people are just obviously not, they're out of their mind, but I don't really have a bio much. People ask me, I just said, look, dude, I'm a guy who (laughs) saw one, wanted to know what the heck I was dealing with. And then I lived in a haunted house and have had some, a lot of spiritual experiences because I believe that there are people who are experiencers. And there was this girl who made this really nasty comment on, 
I think it was on when I went on uh, Will's guys expanded perspectives, and she goes, "Oh, don't believe Josh Turner. He's seen every cryptid. I've never said that. Never ever have said that I've seen every cryptid, ever. The only I don't even think these things are cryptids. What I saw." I think me and my friend, uh, he came on my show and, and a couple other guys that were with us at that time. Um, we, I saw what, what I think was the black dog a couple years after I saw what I, what I think was a werewolf looking creature, two different things. But I mean, in that, in my hometown, there's a lot of weird stuff there and there's a lot of people that practice dark things, you know? And then, um, it was even on the news, I believe back in the eighties, it was like, uh, you know, about like it was some sort of satanic stuff going on, you know, back in the satanic panic. And, you know, if, if you look at like what I've talked about, I've never claimed to see like, you know, all these different cryptids. That's not true at all. So I don't know what she's talking about. I just, I, if, if you call them cryptids, I guess you can say the black dog because, or it was a pack of black dogs. And then, you know, this dog man looking creature, but that's pretty much the, the extent of it. <clears throat> but people are always like, you know, like, Oh, you know, taking shots at me because they, they say that because I'm open and I'm willing to talk about it and I'm willing to take people's stories. And if people have a story out there to tell, you come on the show and I'll let you tell it. If you if you don't feel comfortable with that, I'll tell it for you. And I, I'll take the heat. Okay. So, but Matt, thank you for sitting in once again. And I'm I'm, I'm glad that you were able to uh, come in and talk to us and hang out. I was hoping knee uh, heals up so you can get back out there and, as a pro wrestler. I'm hoping to see you at the conference. <laughs> Hope to see you at the conference. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. I think I had a great time. We're, we're going to get a squat rack, so we, we're ready for you. Yeah, we're going to do Romanian deadlifts. See how many you got <laughs> with that new knee. Yeah. Hey, see what that I'll new knee's got you guys, doing guys, for you. What are you working right with? Now. We're going to set you up doing some <laughs> pistol squats on your bad knee. <laughs> yeah. I look forward to that. <laughs> I do too, believe but me. Thank you for having me, man. I mean, honestly, and you know. It, it it was a good time, and and it's nice to talk to other people that have had experiences and 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 that understand what's going on out there. And there's a lot of crazy stuff, man. I mean, we talked about it tonight, um, but yeah, a uh, lot of stuff out there that's real. People don't realize it's real, and it, it happens. But um, I had a good time. Many time, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Matt, for sure. We'll ask you back. You know what's crazy? And I'll say this. You know. Uh, People like you and me, Matt, we, we, we have a, our kindred spirits in the way that we saw this creature and we both thought we were going to die and it scared the crap out of us. But we lived, um, like you said, by divine intervention, whatever, you know, I, I believe by the grace of God, we lived and we should thank God every day for that. And, and I totally believe in the power of the spirit. And I believe that, that, that you can rebuke these things in the name of Jesus if you have faith and you're strong. Some people, they try to get faith right in that moment. And it's like, ah, well, you know, but you know, for whatever reason we survived it, but I think it would be a sin in a way to like, when someone tells you a story, like, Hey, I saw this reptilian looking thing. And you're like, oh, I don't believe that. And just totally just, out, you know, out of hand, just completely dismiss them because you can't do that. Look at what happened to you. Look at what happened to me. Like, like if we were doing that to somebody who claims to have seen, you know, a chupacabra or a lechusa or a Bigfoot or bat squatch or whatever, you know, it's like people do that. Like they've seen something. So they believe in what they saw and they'll poo poo everybody else's experience. And I think yeah. that's, that's a shame because that's I think that's wrong. kind of a yeah. sin. Yeah. Well, it's also just detrimental to the, if there is a science to this, it's detrimental to it. of us finding any real knowledge. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, Anything that comes in is new stuff that we should be looking at, new stuff that we should be exploring. No matter what avenue it leads us to, we don't know the destination. We're barely figuring out the road. So the That's fact right. that people are trying to say, like, this is the right path is completely ridiculous. Everybody's trailblazing here. But the yeah. problem is is that, you know, people aren't going to believe in hell until they feel the flames. Feel the flames, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's why we have all these pictures now. And this is, we, it goes back before AI just really took off recently. Now there's like, you don't know what's real, mm -hmm. but we had all these pictures. We've had them for a long time, but I never posted them because why do it? People are just going to ridicule it and say it's fake. So I'm like, I don't even bother with people send me pictures and I'm like, oh, thanks. I appreciate the picture, but it's not going to prove anything because nobody's going to believe it anyway. Yeah. 
And so, you know, I believe what you believe too, Josh, that, you know, I, I've had experiences throughout my lifetime. I was a child and, and into my adulthood, I have a lot of things I can't explain. Nothing as big as what happened to me with, with them, that one experience I talked about. Um, but, you know, I believe it too. I think some people like are, are experiencers and, and they're more sensitive to things and that draws them to other things. Um, a lot of weird stuff's happened to me as well, and I have no explanation for it. And it all kind of seems like it's dipping into that pool of what happened to me when I was a kid. So I'm right with you. Yeah. Another thing too, I think, you know, I had somebody, she's an experiencer and she said when she first started seeing the dog, man, she, she would see them periodically, but she, I think Tony, you might've interviewed her. And then she said that she would see other things too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're talking about yeah, but she but, Armando helped me with this. Yeah, that was an investigation y'all did together. Yeah. yeah, and and she when I talked to her, she had said, you know, I'd seen all these different things, but we broke her encounters up and told them piece by piece. But it's wild because those dog men, like she's pretty sure they followed her. Oh yeah, yeah, and they, but she'd also seen other things, but mm. it didn't happen until she started seeing the dog man, but. Anyways, that can be a catalyst. I think there's a lot of things, man. But, uh, folks, that's all for tonight. That's PRT. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, we are we drop it like it's hot every Tuesday. And then on Friday, we do the live stream. And that starts about, what, 9 p.m. Central? Oh, no, 8. What time? Well, we try to start it between 8.30 and 9. Sometimes we start it as late as 9. Yeah, 9, 9 Central. And then we bring the guests on about 10 who, like I've said before, I'm completely rude. I talk about religion and over talk them. Well, really what we're looking for is <laughs> someone to boost our ego. So when they start doing things like telling their story or their opinions, yeah, it really just yeah. start bringing we just, the show We just down. try to interrupt as much as possible and then be like, have you accepted your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I got a pamphlet right here. And then I tell them about which church I think they should go to to avoid the flames of hell. Okay. Up to and including purgatory. You don't want to go there because that's the intermediate zone. Yeah, where you want to be is in the cool zone, yeah, not no in this zone here because this is the hot zone. And then I give them the brochure and I sit there and I tell I said, and sooner or later you'll be not enjoying your no, your time in no time. Not on the interview. <laughs> yeah, see, that's where the superhero in the comments steps in and puts a timestamp. Actually, the story started eight minutes and 37 seconds, and you can just skip all the other stuff. I don't know why Josh Turner always has to talk about everything except stories. <laughs> Actually, the, 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 the story starts at 59 minutes and 22 seconds. And then it ends. It, it ends three minutes. But anyways, folks, thanks for the people who sent the stories in. Thank you, Matt, for being our guest, our, our, uh, our esteemed guest, and then Tony, Anthony, me.